Hey, y'all. Welcome to Now. I'm Jane. And I am here to share with you some energy updates. We'll call it energy updates. Um, the way I see energy is the way, um, many, many ways, but I want to share this because this energy update, it's like what, what, what's been happening, what's happening, what's coming. And then like, how do we as humans navigate through this? And to me, the way I like to navigate through things is to be of service to life and love. So what I share is coming from that lens. And that's the intention that I put out here is however you take this, take it all with a grain of salt and see if anything resonates for you to create a life in love. I love the shadow on my face. So, okay, breathe in. <laughs> Seriously, just like take a deep breath and just anchor into your body and into the present moment, wherever you are, even if you're driving or whatever, like you can just take a deep breath and enjoy that. Such a good feeling, this breath. So I've been... um really tapping into the uh, the state of affairs in the collective as well as the earth herself. Um, some things have shifted in my reality so much so that um, I'll say my attunement is more badass. Uh, my spiritual gifts are more popping and my desire to identify with anything has completely diminished. So um, it's very interesting this now that I'm experiencing. So wherever you are in this now, I'm sending you so much grace because we're going through an epic shift. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to share with you briefly about kind of like what's been happening and the overarching <clears throat> what's coming. The what's coming, I'll give you a heads up, is it's preparation for reals. So what's been happening that's been leading up to this preparation is many of you may have been experiencing this. You may be experiencing this, or maybe you're on the backside of it and you've already been through it. Um, recently, many of us humans were given the opportunity to be very uncomfortable, physically uncomfortable, um, which creates a lot of mental discomfort and emotional discomfort. And one, I'm not saying that it all was all physical to begin with. It's going to be one of the three and it's going to affect the other two. And the discomfort um, has been coming through in waves of feeling unsafe, but knowing that you're safe, but this like, I don't know, is this safe? Is this wise? Um, and then <clears throat> kind of moving through the space of like, you know what? I'm just going to trust that I'm fine. I'm going to trust that I'm fine. You know, I'm going to make the best decisions I can and move through this. Um, the way that uh, appeared for me, I love the way my example show up, was uh, many places that I had been staying, um, I found it really hard to breathe whether there was um, a massive cat or there was uh, mold or there were air fresheners or, or, or um, there was something that made everywhere I stayed physically laborious to breathe with ease. And so I would do my best, <laughs> you know, I would either leave one place uh, was full of cigarette smoke. So I had to leave. I chose to leave. I didn't have to do anything. I chose to leave. Um, and even the place I went was still, it had its own, I had my own challenges in breathing there. And so I went through this like pretty long chunk of time where I was like, everywhere I go, I'm like, it's hard to breathe. It's hard for me to feel nourished. Um, and what I gleaned from that was, um, one, a lot of acceptance for discomfort. Um, I gleaned, uh, boundaries for myself to say no, or this doesn't align for me or whatever. Um, 
I gleaned a much deeper appreciation for my capacity to breathe big time. Um, so I, I, so I see all these like gifts that came with that. And what I'm noticing is that a lot of other people had been experiencing something along the same vein of I'm not comfortable, but I'm also kind of choosing to put myself in this situation. So that what's really been coming in big y'all, this is big. This is really big for probably a lot of you. Um, a lot of us humans is that we are embarking on a new path that is a purpose filled path. Whether we have any clue details, what it is, maybe we're really clear about the details of it. Maybe we're opening a new business. We're starting a new lifestyle. We're starting a new relationship with ourselves, with great spirit, with Pachamama, with a lover, with a partner that maybe we've already had, with a child that we've, you know, maybe been a parent to for our whole, their whole life. And now we're like committing to a new type of relationship. So we're moving into this path where it's like the heart is like, I need you to do X, Y, and Z. I need you to live a life of your purpose. <laughs> I need you to create your reality. I need you to follow love. Like the heart has gotten really loud. For the brave souls that are willing to do that, one thing happens, it, the one, one of the things that happens is like all this extraneous stuff starts to clear off of your path. So if you're like, okay, I'm doing it. I'm following my heart. Well, that means that maybe other things that you thought you loved or that you thought you needed, or that you were dependent upon, will fall away. As we move through a path of the heart, what comes through are going to be really difficult emotions and experiences. So like the emotions of grief, of loss, of like uh, confusion, but also at the same time, they're paired with their opposites. So if you're feeling confused, you might notice that like, there's also this sense of clarity that you can't even describe. If there's a sense of grief, like for all the relationships that might be leaving your experience, there's also this like celebration of freedom or this celebration of space. If there's this, like, if you're experiencing or have been experiencing, um, the, I don't know how I'm going to do this alone. Oh my gosh. There's also this like, wait a minute, I'm never alone. I'm always supported and guided. You know, the universe has me, God has me, goddess has me, creator has me, great spirit, whatever the word is for whatever you call the wordless wonder, that has my back. The universe has my back. So I feel really alone and I feel really like just seen all the time. Okay. So as we follow the heart path, what happens is we start to, um, live in this, it's a different quantum frequency and we're moving in this, this space of the heart. So it's not like we're going to be immune to all of the things on the path. What happens is we become a sacred witness to it. As we become a sacred witness to it, we're like, wow, that's a lot of grief. And that's a lot of curiosity and excitement. The brave soul is going to be the one that feels it all. That's the master alchemist right there. The one that's willing to be like, I feel grief for this relationship that just ended. And like allowing myself to feel the depth of that sadness and sorrow and allowing myself to feel the expansiveness and like exuberation of the joy or curiosity or the the openness of what's next that's the master alchemist that's that's christed consciousness embodied that's that's what they've all talked about it's a jesus dude i'm assuming that's what he was talking about he wasn't like i'm jesus christ nice to meet you he's like my name's yeshua christed is a way of being and it's the being in body, embodied amidst and with all of the things around us. So that's where we're heading, right? Is is where the where the majority of um, how do I word this? It's not the majority of humans. It's not. Um, it's where 
a, a large group of individuals who are going to be and willing to hold a certain frequency of consciousness of energy of light will be able to really do that anchor it in and uh be the embodiment of what we call the new earth heaven on earth they'll be the ones we'll be the ones you'll be the ones whoever um i'll say we will be the ones that live a life that feels really easeful abundant community love support all the things that we ever wanted we'll be able to actually live in that we are going through a time belt, a timeline belt, a quantum portal, a shift made of nothing but choice points to continue to ascend us into the next vibrational frequency of consciousness, of awareness and embodiment. So if someone is say having their heart call them to leave, um, leave a relationship, whatever with a human, with a, with a, with a job, with a community, whatever. So heart is like, you, you gotta leave this behind friend. Because what's out there is what's in here and what's in here lights you up. What? So there are some that are going to be too afraid to do that. Fear will literally stop them in their tracks. And they will have doubt, doubt that they're supported, doubt they can, doubt, 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 doubt. They'll be afraid of failing, being alone. Like they'll be afraid of judgment. Like all these fears, all these things and energies and consciousness and thoughts will literally overtake them. And the heart is meanwhile, like you know, we, we can actually push through this. Like we, we can actually do this. this is what I'm built for. I'm the heart, I'm the eternal well of love. Like I do everything in love. So the heart's like, I can do it. But if the mind is like, mm -mm, nope, can't do it. Then the heart is like, we have to work together. Like we have to be in this coalescent dance to literally move forward and create the manifestation of the life of your dreams, which is pretty exciting. Unless you are being succumbed in these energies and beliefs and thought forms around fear. Once the thought forms are out there of like fear, then we will magnetize reflections to us that are like, see, told you so, told you this is what you should, yeah, see, I proved you right. Now, if the thought forms are like, oh my God, I'm so supported, universe loves me, I am guided and protected all the time, will magnetize to us reflections of that. I prefer that myself. That's why I'm sharing all this, to bring it into the awareness so it can be identified, then, then it can be accepted and integrated. Easy peasy. Okay. And this is all getting to what we're preparing for. So please buckle up buttercup because it's going to get good anyway. So many of us are being like called to do this heart thing. Now you got some that are going to be like, I can't do it. I'm afraid. Fine. I love you. I love you. Thank you for continuing to hold whatever frequencies you're here to hold. I'm here to hold a higher resonant frequency of consciousness. I'm here to hold and be more light. So I'm going to keep following my heart and bet it's not going to be comfortable all the time. Fear will still come into my field because I still hold fear, apparently, because one, I'm human and I've had a lived experience, and also because the collective is too, and I'm walking through collective consciousness as a body, so I'm going to be experiencing wafts of it because I'm a brave soul. I'm going to transmute it. I'm going to be like, I'll feel it. What? Yeah. I feel this fear. Ooh, what are you doing body? Oh, you're vibrating. Okay. That's something my, I noticed this today. I'll the 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 divert just to share this. Um, I went through a uh, a process with a dear sister friend of mine, Nikki, who does body temple dance, and so I was participating. Love it. I love movement, and so we're doing this thing, and we were calling up different forms of fear, and one of the forms of fear, um, we went through a a, a prompt that like vibrated us, like like you're frozen. And I was like, oh my God, this is what happens. This is literally what happens to me. When I'm in a space of like physical fear, my body starts to vibrate. And I've been aware of it. And what my, the way I do that, the way I deal with that is like, I hold myself and I'm like, oh girl, I feel you. <laughs> like, I feel your fear. I feel it. Like I'm vibrating. And then, so I soothe my nervous system and my um, mental attachment to this experience that is creating fear for me. So I calm my nervous system just enough to be like, Hey girl, I feel you, you know, I breathe. And then I, I, I consider, is it safe to move forward? This happens to me on hikes that I consider to be scary, like with steep things or like stuff like that. I don't like heights. 
Um, and so some, and so after I've soothed myself, then majority of the time my body is like, okay, let's go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for acknowledging me. And so what I'm doing is I'm reprogramming, um, my subconscious mind and my physical body's response to fear. And so <clears throat> what that does is it cultivates a new relationship with myself. So like, say I feel that fear again and I soothe myself. And then I ask myself like, okay, is it safe? Are we ready to go on? And sometimes my body says, no, let's turn around. I am complete. And I honor that. I'm like, okay, like we're done. Like let's, let's turn around. Let's go a different route, whatever. So I share that because as these things come up, as we're following this heart path, it is to look at it square in the face and be like, yeah, okay, I see you. Can I feel you? Mm, that feels like judgment or that feels like lack. Oh, that's a lack of consciousness. I just don't believe that I'm good. Enough, right. Or I feel frozen. I'm stuck in stagnation. Right. So then we allow ourselves to feel it. And then we go through a practice that's in alignment for you to move through. I have embodiment practices. A lot of other people do. So it's it's a way of moving through it and then reprogramming the relationship with this fear. So now I'm following my heart while imagine like a video game where you're like, pew, 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 like space invaders. And you have fear and lack and judgment and shame and guilt. And they're all coming at you. Meanwhile, you got to get to the end of the game. It's called death. We all get there. So you get, you know, you're going there to the end of the game. Meanwhile, like you can put your blinders on and be like a horse and get up, get up, get up. Fine. You can do that. But imagine your besties behind you and they got to follow you and they don't have the ability to duck, duck and bob and weave and, and juke and all those things to get to stay on your tail enough. So meanwhile, all the, all the pew, pew, pew that you could have done is like literally falling back on your homie, your brother, your sister, your children, your like them. So that's why I find it really important to do this healing work, right? So following the heart, you'll notice these things come in. Also, by the way, if you would like any support in this to guide you through it, specialty, trust. So anyway, you just send me an email, janetheguide at gmail.com. So, so all these things are coming at us. It's not just like annihilating them, but in a way it is annihilating them. So what that does is it clears my path and it clears the path for anyone else behind me. Okay. And I'm really loving everyone out there that's ahead of me doing it too. Like, thank you so much that I'm not the first one on this path. No one is the first one on this path. So there, like so many people have been clearing it and like honoring them starts to give us more momentum to like, kind of like uh, shoot faster anyway. So that's what we're doing. We're moving on to this path of the heart, going through a timeline belt of like rapid ascension. So what's happening in this current now that I'm picking up on is this almost like pause. Now the pause is really challenging for some people because many of us have been programmed to go and do and do and go and go and do produce. Because if you're not, then you're not doing a good job at humaning or whatever. You're not worthy of love or whatever, whatever the program is. So this pause is to integrate in stillness, this is important. I'll go back to what stillness is. In stillness, all the changes that have occurred. So the remaining um, hints, echoes, energies of like, say, grief or fear can come so deeply into our awareness that it doesn't take us out of our path, that it is honing us. This space of rest is honing us. Because it's only in this space of rest, true stillness, y'all, where you're like, you're not doing anything. As little of anything as possible. I mean, yeah, like get out, move your body, breathe, connect with Pachamama, do your creative stuff, right? Dance, play, all the things, you know, go do your jobby job if that's what you got to do. I understand. But like the, like, the, the pattern and programs of like, okay, well I get home and I turn on the TV and I get a couple beers and I hurry up and run the errands and I got to run to the kids to this and got to do this and that you are literally setting yourself up for a challenging what's coming up ahead. I'm going to get to that in a minute for what, what's coming ahead. Cause nobody's talking about this. And I'm like, why? Well, oh, maybe I'm the, one of the only people that see this shit that can talk about it anyway. Profit. So labels. Okay, so 
as, as you rest, there is such a deep healing that comes with that. It's the spaciousness that we allow ourselves to be taken care of, be taken care of by whom? What if you're like a loner, a rebel, and you're like, I don't have anybody. Bull. You have, you have the wind, you have the fire, you have the trees, you have the soil, you have, you have, you have literally the elements all around you. Allow yourself to be taken care of. Ask great spirit, God, goddess, whatever. Ask great spirit. Please take care of me. Please watch over me. Please guide me. Please give me what I need. Please hold me. Just hold me. Sit your, sit yourself on the, the bottom of like on, on the dirt next to a tree and just lean on it and let the earth Hold you while you just relax. Lay on the ground. Let yourself float in some water. I don't care. Stare at a fire and let the mesmerizing energy of that forceful element just hold your gaze steady to where you get to have all the visions and clarity that you need. So allow yourself to be held and taken care of by community, by friends, whatever that looks like. There is such a deep sense of rest that is really being called forth. What's going to come up with this is our boundaries. So it's going to be uh, maybe you're taking care of someone and you're like, I don't want to do it anymore. Well, then you got to say a boundary of like, hey, I really love taking care of you and just need to change some things. You know, like I'm running on empty now and I want to continue to, to love you the way I have been and it's not filling my cup. So like, can we talk about a balance? You know, anyone can do this. These, these conscious conversations, people don't know how to do that. Not everybody. A lot of people don't know how to do that. Again, call if you need some guidance. Anyway, so what will come through is in this give and take of reciprocity of true caregiving, of holding the space and letting people around you rest will bring up um, other things while you're on your path to go ahead and clear through. Being able to use your voice, your words, speaking compassion and kindness and still be in an unconditional radical acceptance for everything that is. It's work. It's path, it's process. We're never done. So allowing self to rest is a go is going to allow a deeper sense of integration because this is this is the juicy bits, y'all. We are preparing. What came through, um, I guess a month or so ago was uh it was for it was it was ahead of time. I held a kick uh a cacao ceremony, summer solstice, full moon, like ceremony. And what came through was like, we're preparing. And that's all that came through. And I was, and I, but I felt the, 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 like the gravity of that and like the importance of that, but not like a freak out, not like a stress, right? It wasn't like I had to prepare for my SATs. I was all types of freaked out. Ugh. So I did poorly. When we're in freak out mode, we do poorly when we're tested. Okay. When we're in freak out mode, we literally don't think straight because our mind can't handle it. But if we're following this, the mind has been trained now to be the servant of the heart. So the heart's always going to lead the way. The mind is going to be a gentle follower. It's going to be the nudger. It'll clear some path. Like it'll be good. We are, we are in a mode of preparation. What are we preparing for? We're preparing for the great flood. How about that? This is very literal and metaphorical. We are preparing for the great flood. How, what, what do I mean the great flood? Let me tell you how this is going to show up because it's not going to show up in just one way. You know, we've read so many stories and prophecies about floods and, you know, whether it's been the way they've been transcribed or scribed or shared or passed down. I don't know about y'all, but like, I always thought water. That's not true. Sometimes it is. There are plenty of places that are getting flooded right now around the, this earth plane. It's really bonkers. Talk about a clearing and purifying process, but it gets really gross and muddy until it gets like cleaned up. And nothing's the same, you know, after a flood, nothing is the same after a flood. Nothing is the same after a flood. That's a message on repeat. We're preparing for a great flood where nothing will be the same afterward. 
a flood will change the geology, the landscape, the manifested reality in which we live. It gives us a new board to play the game of life on. So we are going to experience a great flood. Now, I mean, we're coming up on the 26,000 year uh, solar cycle and all these other cycles. We're in the Kali Yuga. We're, the, we're in the fifth world in the Hopi prophecy where the, the condor and the eagle and like peace is actually coming. Bet this is what's going to bring peace. It's going to be messed up for a lot of people. It's going to be really great for others. Depends on what you're doing. This is going to be the deciding factor. That's why this is so important. The, we're, this flood that we're preparing for, it's going to come in the form of plasma waves via our solar system. These plasma waves will be bringing forth light, energy, and data, photons. If I am following this, I'm literally living in the light of love. So if the light of love, because everything in nature is love, if the light of love is going to pummel me, I'm already as that. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. So we're going to have a big plasma situation. We're going to have a water-based flood where um, many areas of the earth will experience flooding of waters, rivers, creeks, um, those things, water. We are going to experience, I love this one, a flood of love. We are going to experience a flood of love, of compassion, of creative expression. We are going to experience that. That will be the great flood. Because when we remember, when we're living from this place in this eternal now, the name of my church, when we're living in the space of the eternal now, we've reconciled all aspects of death. We've willingly walked through the death portal to do the healing work. Well, I, I walk through the death portal whenever I can. I'm like, oh, here it comes. I feel the depths of this. I'm going to, God, it hurts so bad. It hurts so good. Because I know that I'm eternal. Like the bigger part of me is eternal. I'm not attached to this. I love this. Oh my God. I love the body. So good. Like, oh, it's just me. But I'm not attached to it. I am a part of it in this now. When I am no longer with my body, my body is going to be the sacrifice that I, my offering that I give back to Pachamama so she can take the elemental nature of me and, and reconstitute it and grow something new. Wow, I think that's an honor. But once we reconcile death of ourselves and of every single thing outside of ourselves, we start to live in a higher frequency consciousness. We start living a more joyful, grateful life because we're like, oh my God, this is, this is the finite part of the infinite. Whoa. That's like such an oxymoron. It's so delightful. I get to live in and as an oxymoron. Like, yes. So if I can move through the death portal over and over again, feel all the feelings that come with it, still allowing the light of love to guide me in my purpose, then no matter what floods us, no matter what I see outside of myself, no matter what death I see, I will be okay. I'm still going to feel sadness. I'm still going to feel grief. I'm still going to drop to my knees and weep like a baby. And it's not going to take me out of the game. It's not going to take me out of the game of life. It's not going to take me out of the energy of creation that is pulsing through me, that is always wanting to come forth through my words, through my actions, through my thoughts, through my supporting ways, like whatever that is. So the flood of love and compassion and grace and joy will also be... Um, coupled with their uh dualed their dualized aspects so with the flood of love there will also be a flood of fear well if i'm following this love is the only thing guiding me i'll see the fear i might i'll feel it I, i'm not gonna get off my path fear isn't gonna take me out you know the 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 flood of joy 
of pleasure um, is also going to be met with a flood of anger and pain. Am I allowing myself to be joyful that I have a body to feel pain, that I have a heart that loves so big I can feel pain? Like whatever it is. And as we do that, the flood of love that is coming in and the flood of, we'll say, fear that's coming in. If we are, if I am living from the place of love, I'm taking the love and I'm literally embodying it and I'm creating with it as it. And then the fear itself literally begins to annihilate out of the field. We are preparing for the great flood. It's coming. And it's not a fearful thing. I guess it can be, (laughs) you know, like if that's your thing, like if you're afraid of death or you're afraid of feeling things that suck, you know, if you're afraid of being sober because you don't want to feel your shit. Oh yeah. Bet you're feeling fear for real. Been there. Trust. I know, you know, so it's, that this is the choice point that the, the belt we're moving through is full of nothing but choice points right now. The invitation is to rest, restore, rejuvenate, relax, breathe, integrate, and don't worry about what you are going to do. Trust that as you follow your heart, you are doing it. You will receive inspired ideas. You'll receive opportunities. You'll receive clarity. You'll receive a cleared path for you to do what you need to do. There's no pushing. There's no fighting. There's no jealousy. There's no um, um, competition. It literally is you're doing you from your heart so big that no one can touch what you're doing because you're the only one that can do exactly what your heart's calling you to do. You know, we might have, you know, a billion, you know, sound healers out there now because everybody bought a set of crystal bowls that don't know what they're actually tuned to. And I think that's funny just because it says 528. You don't know. Anyway, but like we have like a million sound healers because they all have these bowls. But here's the thing. Only one person can manipulate the sound waves using the bowls, like say you, and only you can hold the space like you do. Only you bring your energy that you bring. Only you can can literally speak the words that you speak, sound the way you sound, be the confident anchored one that you can be. It's only you. And whatever we're doing, if we're following this so fully, for reals, life literally aligns for us because life is love and form. So we're preparing for... um, a great flood that will birth us, push us, inspire us, light a fire under our asses to consciously create a life in love. And that's what I see happening very soon. So if there's any support, guidance, um, if there's any more that, you know, like, reach out for like private one-on-one things. Go to my website, janetheguide.com. I have some longer ceremonies and retreats and things like that that are coming online, just getting details finalized so that you can experience your heart living life and love wherever you are and literally ascend your vibrational frequency and your level of consciousness, activate your spiritual gifts, like literally tune you up from wherever your baseline is I can tune you up. I'm like, I'm like a spiritual mechanic, but like as a guide, because I want you to be able to work on your own vehicle. So you're not relying on me or anyone else. Cause that's just ugh, codependent. It's lame. I don't like it. Jeez. Anyway. Um, and I was going to say something else and I don't remember. Hmm. Um, Oh yeah. One-on-one sessions. You can have those email me. I may have a calendar calendar. 
I like to do it. I'm just, I'm, I'm, old, I'm old school. Like I, anyway, email me. Um, I am traveling around the United States. Currently I am in Utah. So I am going to be moving around and sharing these quantum sermons and ceremonies, sharing cacao, all the things that light me up, that support me in holding the space for people that choose to experience the medicine that I have and that the cacao brings. Um, they support they support the process and they taste good. So, <clears throat> um, oh, that's what I was going to say. If you are interested in anything else, if you're like, oh, tell me more about the blah, 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 blah. Put in the comments. It gives me inspiration on what to share because I'm not consistent. I would like to be more consistent um, just in general. <laughs> I live in the now. Um, so if there's anything that you would like to know more about or me to speak more on, comment, please. Um, tell me your thoughts, opinions, what you're experiencing, what you're picking up on. If you think that what I'm saying is complete BS, like whatever. So I do want to share this and I'm going to hop off here. Okay. So check this. So this great flood, here's, here's one thing that I just want to put out there that like, don't forget this. And his dear sister friend of mine, Margarita reminded me of this yesterday. And it's like, I know this so much that I don't speak it. And there's so much power to the words in which we speak. And I hear people saying some shit, y'all like, oh, this place is always going to be crappy. <laughs> you know, like humanity is lost and they'll be lost forever. It's always been this way. It'll always be this way. And it always sucks. Um, so here's the truth and you can subscribe to it or not. Just remember that whatever you believe, whatever you speak is literally the reality in which you experience. So this is what I actually see and believe. So bet I'm going to experience it and I'm excited. So love wins. The light always annihilates the dark. The light in its wholeness, in its holiness, is a combo platter of a balanced light and dark, we'll say, these two aspects that come together that make the oneness. The oneness we'll call light. It's not saying that darkness is bad and we need to get rid of all darkness. No, duh, it's part of duality. It's part of like why we human. It's it's fun. It's like the juicy pain stuff that we actually totally get off on. But right now, there seems to be a magnetic pull and push that feels like the darkness is winning. It's just because people are getting sucked into their mental programs. So when we can transcend the mind and activate the heart, that's the key then the love literally wins, but it wins through us. We become the warriors and the winners and the way showers. Like we become like the human lightsabers that literally annihilate through any crap, through our joy, through our words, through our dance, through our just being. That's the end of the story. That's like, that's how it ends. And then it never ends because what we get to do is create from wherever we want to create. I want to create a life in love. I want to see that. I want to, like, I want the majority of humanity, humanity to experience that. Like, oh, it makes me really excited. It's like totally just for me. Like, if, oh, can you imagine like how dope if everybody's like living in like highest good purpose, which is serving life in love. The animals are like living in peace and harmony. The waters are clean. The air is clean. We got fresh food. We don't have chemicals everywhere. Like we eat and like nourishing things. We're living in community. We love each other. We got space. We got connection. We have all of it. We have abundance because life is abundant. <laughs> so, okay. I just wanted to share the ending of the story. <laughs> I know, spoiler alert. <laughs> So anyway, I'm sending everyone so much love, so much love. And um, please rest and just remember that we are preparing for something far greater than our minds can remotely like grasp. It's not for our mind to grasp. It's for our heart to know and our choice to be to have faith and trust. Faith and trust is what's going to float us through this. Okay. So I'm sending so much love, blessings just 
everywhere to, to everybody, everywhere. So that's all I want to share. So remember how loved you are and remember that you are loved and take care of yourselves, take care of each other. And I will see you on another now. I look forward to seeing y'all wherever we meet. Okay, bye.